I'm Kai Norezo. Today we're going to talk about compas. We're going to dive right into what this whole mysterious compas thing is all about. And one of the complicated things about compas is that the word actually has a bunch of different meanings in Spanish and in flamenco. So we're going to talk about a few of them. We probably won't cover all of them in this lesson, but they will come up. The more you study flamenco, the more you will hear different ways of using this word. The most specific way we use the word compas in flamenco is to refer to one compas, which basically means a measure or something very similar to a measure. A compas is actually different than a measure because it has a bunch of different accents which are distributed differently, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So in Western music, you would have a measure of four with a strong downbeat on one and a slightly less strong uh, accent on beat three. You might have three-four music with just a strong downbeat on one. Uh, you could have six-eight with strong beats on the one and the four, but in all those cases, it's very evenly distributed. In the compas, the accents are unevenly distributed, and that's what makes it a little weird at first. So if we think about a compas of 12, this is the foundation of solea, solea por bulería, alegrías, bulería, and to a certain extent, some other ones. And these are really what people think of when they think about the weird 12-beat compas that happens in flamenco. The thing you'll read in every book about flamenco is that the accents are on 12, 3, 6, 8, and 10. And this is true, but it's really not the whole truth, which is what I want to talk about today. We're going to start with solea, which is the oldest of the forms, and it's nice and slow, so it's sort of easy to get a, a handle on what's going on. And if we look at one compas, so one of these measures or cycles or systems, whatever you want to call it, one compas, that's the word we're going to use instead of all those other ones I just tried, of 12 beats in solea, uh, in a very simple way, could sound like this. One, two, three. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that I didn't really hit an accent on 6. This is why I say that the 12, 3, 6, 8, 10 distribution of accents is true, but it's not always true. Uh, it's part of the story. The way I look at it, the most important parts of the compas are the 3 and the 10. If you look at a solea, what we're really doing is 1, 2, 3, right? We move from E to F on beat 3. 1, 2, 3. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Right, so we moved from E to F on three and basically back from F to E on ten. And the way we got to ten was seven, eight, nine, ten. So we start that, what I think of as the drive to ten, the drive to resolution, started on seven. It can start on six and it will start in a lot of other different places. But the most common is something that looks like one, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. If I speed this up and play it in solea por bulería, which is more often played por medio, which is in the fridge in key of A, I would get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Right? One, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So again, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Move away on three, resolve on ten. Alegrías is a major key version of the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We resolve back on ten. And in the major key, suddenly we see, oh, this is the one chord, this is the five chord, this is the one chord. So if you know anything about music theory, you know that most Western music revolves around the one, the dominant, or the five chord, and the one chord. In flamenco, we have this relationship. Instead of that relationship most of the time. So all the Phrygian stuff, so la, so la, por bulería, bulería, um, is all in Phrygian. So rather than 5 1, we have, which I hesitate to call flat 2 to 1 or sub 5 to 1, or you know, there's different ways to look at it from a music theory perspective. But really, the function of this chord is the chord you move to and resolve from back to the 1 chord. Going a little faster, if we get to Buleria, we get 12, 3, 6, 8, 10, 12. You notice here I am hitting 6 and 8. I'm hitting those accents pretty strongly. But I'm still moving 12 and 1 and 2 and 3. And we'll talk about this in a minute, about why I started on 12. 12, 1, 2, 3, 6, 
8 resolve on 10, 12, 3, whatever happens in the middle, I still resolve on 10, 12, 3, 6, 8, 10. The Wuleria tends to start on 12, which is very confusing for some people, uh, and a lot of people will say, well, why not call the 12 1? My main answer is because that's just not how we talk about flamenco. So if you want to be able to communicate with other people in flamenco, you have to use this language to be understood. A possibly more convincing argument would be that the accents are still the same. So in Solea, I'm doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three. It doesn't feel like it starts on the twelve, but if I hit that twelve, a little more strongly, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. You start to see how that 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, and 10, 12, 12 starts to feel like the downbeat. This isn't something you need to worry about just yet, but it's something to keep in mind. So the 12 beat compas stays the same. But sometimes we talk about it starting on 12 because we hit that 12 harder and sometimes we start on one. In general, the slower you go, the more likely you are to start on one. So Solea tends to start on one, but, have, but can start on 12. Alegrias and Solea por Buleria, which are this mid-tempo, sort of halfway between a Solea and a Buleria, really can start on one or 12 and they probably do more or less in even parts. I'd say sort of 50-50-ish. And then Buleria, generally starts on 12, but there are times when it starts on 1. And what I mean by it, I mean the phrase that you're playing. So I could be in the middle of playing 12, 3, 6, 8, 10, 12, 3, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So all I did there was 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, so the measures, the compases, didn't actually change in any way. So when I say it starts on 12, it's really about how I play beat 12 when I get to it, because it doesn't in any way change one compas flowing after another. I want to quickly add, because it comes up, especially in Buleria, that there are exceptions to everything, and even to this idea of the 12-beat compas. In Buleria, there will be times where you will run into something other than a full 12-beat compas. Um, you can think of it as a half a compas or an extra six beats or whatever. It's really not something you need to worry about, but it is good to know that it exists and that it's not a mistake. Because I remember when I first started transcribing a lot of flamenco, I would be very confused when suddenly things would not add up uh, to 12s. And this is something that you might run into. So just very quickly, in case this is something that you've run into, the way I think of this is 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I adjusted my counting to make it work out when I got back to 12. If I hadn't done that, it would have sounded like this. 12, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. And now my counting is all messed up. I will get into this in one of the Buleria's lessons, but I do want to just mention quickly that this is a thing that happens. And this might be a good place for me to mention that if you ever hear me say the word always, I mean most of the time. And if I say never, I mean usually not, because there are exceptions to just about everything, just not always helpful to know about them at the beginning. You want to first learn the rules and then learn the exceptions later. So focus on the basic rules that we're talking about here. Another meaning of the word compas that we use a lot is to say that you're in compas or out of compas. And basically, uh, you're out of compas if you play too many beats or not enough beats. This gets a little tricky because, of course, if I played a 14-beat compas, it's wrong. But if my next one were only 10 beats long, then I would end up right. But really, as a flamenco player, I'm going to hear that first 14-beat compas is just too long, and I'm going to hear that second one is too short, and I'm not going to think at the end of the 24 beats, oh, you played two compases. Because there's a sense of resolution, that's why I talk so much about this one, two, three, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 thing, that thing where you resolve back on 10. The resolution on 10 doesn't happen every time in every falsetta, especially in the falsettas very often we're, we're phrasing things differently, just in threes. But you'll learn to feel what a compas sounds like. So if I say that something is out of compas or someone else tells you you're out of compas, chances are you have phrased something in a way where it no longer feels in compas. Those of us who, who do this all the time and really feel it. 
Another really important meaning of the word compas is this distinction that we make between plain compas and plain falsetas. So falsetas, you probably know, are the usually longer than one compas, melodic, interesting things that we play in a solo piece or when the singer's not singing and or, you know, for a dance, uh, there's a bunch of places where falsetas can happen. And when we're not playing falsetas, we are playing compas, or sometimes we'll say just plain compas. And what that means is keeping time, staying in compas, and playing, the way I think of it is, is anything that you can sort of get out of at the end of the compas that you're playing without it being an issue. So in the middle of a falseta, you might not want to just stop at the end of that one because you might not be resolved. But when you're just playing compas, you're kind of stringing together these one compas or maybe two compas phrases, which are generally really traditional and variations on really traditional stuff. So again, in solea, if I'm doing this, four, five, six, I'm playing compas, I might do this. start a falsetta, I'm not playing compas anymore. It's a tricky distinction because sometimes the compas that we play is is beautiful and very sophisticated and just as interesting as or more interesting than some falsettas. Um, but it's still kind of based in these really traditional single compas or two compas phrases that we use as sort of the glue that holds everything together, whether we're playing a solo piece or a company.